Okay, so recently my um, girlfriend spilled some milk on her uh, iBook screen and uh, it basically went back behind here and potentially shorted out the inverter or um, blew out the backlights. There's also a micro fuse and the logic board that could potentially be at fault, but I'm just assuming that it's potentially the backlight which is the cheapest thing to replace so I thought I'd document this uh, process so that uh, anyone else who had a similar problem with the backlight burning out could um, potentially fix their computer on their own um, it only costs about nine ninety nine to that's nine dollars and ninety nine cents to replace your backlight which is of course significantly cheaper than getting a whole new um, computer or having it professionally repaired at pretty much exorbitant rates. Now, um, the symptoms of having your backlight burn out are basically that um, you can see ghosting of you know what would normally be on your screen like the Apple logo, it's just that there's no light. Pretty self-explanatory. <clears throat> So the first part of the process is getting um, the plastic backing off of the uh, screen so that you can operate on the relevant components. There's just four little um, hex screws um, that need to be removed and then the plastic shell is popped off the back. It's actually a really nice design and all you need to um, remove it is this uh, little allen wrench not sure what the gauge is but um, you'll just have to find one that fits and then a, a screwdriver a flathead screwdriver that you can wedge in between the edge carefully this one is a custom job I, uh, I uh, used uh, some sandpaper to sharpen it to sort of a, an exacto's edge so that I, it can get into those spaces it's kind of a useful tool to have for this kind of a thing. So I'm going to unscrew the screws and then pop this off. Really easy to unscrew these. I always keep a white um, porcelain plate for screws because you're going to have a lot of those when you're working on this kind of thing. It's good to keep them from getting lost. Since the screws have already been removed, it's going to be pretty easy to pop this off because, I mean, it basically wants to come off. <clears throat> Just working it in here and prying back a little. It's best to just do it gradually so that you're not going to snap any plastic parts off. Pretty easy to manage. There's just a couple of little retention clips that that hold it on, and you just gotta work those off, and then bingo, there you go. There's your your plastic <coughs> back is now completely detached. Just set that aside, and here's the the goods. Basically, what I'm going to be working with for the rest of the session. You can see these little screw holes here. There's once again there's four of these little screws that basically hold this um, shield on the back. So that has to be removed for the next step of the process. Okay, those screws have been removed. Now this next part is a little tedious. Um, there's tape. There's this yellow tape that they use that's all around the edges that kind of um, holds down the uh, the shield on the back so you basically have to um, work with that tape um, and very carefully just kind of prod and poke and and uh, manipulate until you are able to get the tape detached and then you're free to pop the shield it's going to be a little sticky, but don't worry about that. It's 
it's designed to come off. You just need to carefully manipulate it. So there we go. So we're in yet another layer down. <clears throat> and this is pretty much the critical um, layer. It's just, just one more before we actually remove the backlight itself. Um, and you can position this better. The backlight is right down here. And this is the inverter right here. Um, it may also need to be replaced. I won't know that until I've actually experimented a little with the backlight. Just to make this a little bit easier on myself, I'm going to completely detach the um, the screen from the rest of the computer. So there's a little um, jack right here that you just have to slowly manipulate out. Pop that out and uh, and then detach the tape back here. And after that's done, you can basically lift out the entire screen and detach it from the rest of the computer. Um, there's also um, down here in the corner. This is the um, power that goes to the backlight from the backlight inverter. So you want to pop that little clip out. And then there you go, you have your screen separated from the computer. You can just set the computer aside. You won't be working with that until you put everything back together. So once you have the screen itself um, removed from everything else, it makes things quite a bit easier to uh, work with the backlight. So once you separate the screen, there's four more screws, two on each side really small ones that you want to remove from the uh, metal rim that basically retains the entire um, contents of the LCD. Once that's done there's a little um, retainer tab here that you're going to want to pry up otherwise there's no way you're going to get that back off. Once that's popped up you can basically separate the uh, screen itself from the uh, retainer. Okay, so this is the next really tricky part, although it's not as tricky as it seems. Um, right here on the corner, there's these little um, flesh-colored um, silicon caps that protect the end of the CFL, which is right here. Um, so you just want to basically as carefully as you can, um, pry that out until it pops out and then just set it aside with all the screws and everything else. Now you should actually be able to see the end of the CFL itself, which is with the wire connecting it. So basically um, what I'm going to do next is unsolder that point and pull off the wire. Now, for pretty obvious reasons, uh, you don't want to solder this for very long because it's very sensitive to heat, so you basically want to just tap the soldering iron to the contact and detach the wire as quickly as possible. And in order to expedite that a little, I'm just going to stick a screwdriver in here so that uh, there's some pressure so basically the second that the second that begins to cool it's going to pop right off or heat up I mean so here we go so that took less than a tenth of a second alright so what I'm doing now is um, flipping the display around and I'm going to pull out the um, second uh, silicon end cap. And these are kind of a bitch to get out, so. Oh, just <laughs> using a screwdriver to aid in the bet. Alright, so we have the same situation down here. Have the uh, black wire holding the uh, 
tip of the CFL there. So I'm just going to repeat the process that I did on the other one with this. Just apply a little leverage with the screwdriver and touch the soldering iron. Pop. Alright, so that's successfully detached. So now basically what we have is um, the CFL is loose in the uh, brass channel of the display. Now it should be a relatively simple process to just push on one side and slide it right out of there. Ooh, look at that. So easy it uh, seems like it takes no skill at all. Alright, first I'm going to take this little um, uh, bracer off of here and put it on the new tube. Add that small. Alright, so here's my um, new CFL, just as it came from the factory. Now these these are definitely delicate, but I mean you don't have to be like ridiculously over cautious. Kind of like they suggest that you should be. Alright, slipping the little retainer putting it in the middle of the tube. After further inspection it appears that my um, CFLs are not exactly the same length. So what I did was rather than trim off the entire length of the um, contact on the end, I just trimmed off about uh, half a millimeter so that uh, basically these are now the same length so that I'll be able to resolder the wires. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is slide the new CFL into the channel. And bingo. Okay. And now comes the probably the trickiest part, which is soldering the wires onto the new contacts. Oh yes, that was basically a perfect solder if I do say so myself. <clears throat> so that, that end is effectively finished. All I have to do is uh, solder the other end and close this baby up pretty much. The key to these kind of projects is to always make it as easy on yourself as possible to basically set everything up beforehand so that as I said, you have sort of an unfair advantage when it comes to positioning and just have, having everything sort of at your fingertips so that you don't have to do anything impulsive and fuck up. Bingo was his name. Oh. This solder is even better than the last one. That's definitely fortuitous. Now I did I did melt the plastic a little there, but no big deal. Uh, it's not going to really have any effect <clears throat> on the performance of the display, which is what's important. Now the really kind of annoying thing here, at least for me, is that it's likely that all of this um, was basically a waste of time because until I actually test it I won't know if it's the backlight or the inverter that's the problem so I think before I do anything more what I'm going to do is uh, hook up the uh, CFL and to the uh, main body of the computer and see, see if it turns on if you also want to save yourself some time um, this is basically how to do how to do it you uh, just take the little plug here and you find the jack that you pulled it out of earlier it can only go in in one direction so it's pretty easy to figure out just plug it in and power on the computer
Well, I guess that means my inverter is blown, which is really disappointing. <sighs> Lucky for me that uh, I don't really uh, have to replace the inverter to have successfully replaced the backlight. So it looks like I'm out another 30 bucks. But comparatively, that's really um, not bad considering that a new display costs uh, something like uh, 300 or some ridiculous amount like that. You can actually buy one of these iBooks complete and uh, practically new off of eBay for around 400 bucks, so there really isn't much point. <clears throat> so I guess I'll be making another video showing how to replace the inverter at some point. Uh, I hope you guys uh, learned from this video, and uh, good luck on your own projects. Thanks for watching.